What is going on guys, my name is AK, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we've got the settings that you're going to want to be running inside of Warzone 2. Now, a lot of people, when they do settings videos, they like to go through and list everything, even all the ones that don't make any difference. So, to save both of our time, I'm just going to be going through the ones that will actually improve your Warzone experience. So, let's head over to the settings tab. Uh, we'll be starting off on controller, because I use controller. If you do your keyboard and mouse, um, you will have to find your keyboard and mouse settings elsewhere. Um, but I run default controller layout, um, and I do 5.5 sensitivity with 0.85 uh, aim down sight speed. This just gives you um, slightly less um, sensitivity when you're aim down sight, which I find works really well for the sort of the long range gunfights that you often get into in Warzone. I also use auto attack sprint, which means you push your stick forward, you go straight into attack sprint. Uh, this just really speeds up your gameplay, especially in Modern Warfare 2, which is a little bit slower compared to um, certainly the previous games with all the slide cancelling. So having attack sprint on just speeds up that gameplay a little bit. I uh, also run Prioritize Interact for the Interact Reload behavior. Now this means that um, you can loot just by tapping your Interact button rather than having to hold it down, which makes looting a lot quicker. Um, if you're at a position where you can pick something up, or you want to reload, um, if you just hold down the button, that will um, force you to reload, uh, and so the tap prioritizes interacting with anything. So maybe it might take you a little while to get used to, uh, but once you're used to that, this will mean that you can loot a lot quicker. Uh, there also is also a prioritize reload if you want to switch it the other way around, so you make reload uh, the more important one, and then if it's between reloading or picking something up, uh, then you hold down to pick up. But do one of the prioritize. Uh, I use prioritize interact, um, but yeah, that will help you out. I'm a play, I use apply one. I know some people like to do apply all. I do it one at a time um, just because I find uh, it's easier to cancel if someone starts running up on you while you're plating up. That does happen quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I stick that on apply one. Moving on to the um, advanced settings, uh, of course, aim assist on. Uh, I run the Black Ops aim assist. I find this to be the most effective and sort of the, the most powerful aim assist in the game. Now, it's not something I use, but uh, I have had a little play around with the gyro aiming, where you actually use your controller and spin it around to aim. It's the weirdest thing ever. Uh, maybe I'll do a challenge video sort of uh, showing how that works, but yeah, I don't personally play with that. Aim curve response type, I set to dynamic. This, again, is proven to be sort of the best one for snapping onto people, getting that good sort of turning um, aim assist. Uh, and also, I do the focus uh, aim assist down to 0.85 to match my normal aim assist. Um, so this is if you've got, say, a sniper and you're holding your breath, um, and then just so that that is at the same sort of ratio as my normal aim down sight, I like to keep that all the same. ADS sensitivity uh, transition timing, you want that to be instant. That's just going to have the um, the switch from 100% sort of normal looking around speed to that reduced. Um, you just set that to instant. I find that works the best and allows you to adjust the quickest. I will just quickly go through the input stead zone. Uh, I run 0 uh, 0.05 for both the left and the right stick. Um, fairly new controller, so stick drift isn't too much of an issue at the moment. I'm keeping it at that. Um, might be able to run it a little bit lower. You want to go as low as possible without getting stick drift, um, but I find that's fine. Uh, and then the left and right triggers, I have the uh, the adaptive triggers. Just to, you tap them. They're not like a, a full trigger. It's a, a scuff thing. Um, so I set them both to zero, which again will mean that you get the fastest response to when you pull the trigger. Set it as low as you can. If it starts firing without you pressing a button just up it a little bit but yeah set it as low as it can go i have automatic airborne mantle on that just helps with um climbing onto things um in the air uh, i find that works best especially if you're trying to jump into windows and stuff like that that's quite useful um and then the parachute auto deploy is one that you're going to want to turn off uh, i did mention this in one of my in my, one of my youtube shorts about how to like the best settings to change in warzone basically this means if you're dropping down you can go right to the bottom before you pull your parachute so if you're dropping onto a, a heavily contested spot i don't know maybe like observatory or something you can get right down to the roof before you pull your parachute and that way you'll be able to get uh, a a little bit quicker and hopefully that'll give you a little advantage off the start but that's about everything for the controller settings moving on to graphics this is going to be quite dependent on your system itself um i play full screen borderless because i have two monitors and so um if i'm listening to some music i've got something up on the other screen i like to be able to switch between them without um it closing this window every time uh, if you've only got one monitor uh, or if you're sort of locked in for a tournament or something uh, chuck it on full screen exclusive i think that gives you the best performance um but borderless um is is good enough for me and it, it just means i can use my two monitors a little bit easier so that's what i play on most of the time but yeah exclusive if you really want the best performance so I just run that at the standard resolution that it um, sets to automatically, and I think uh, it's 144 hertz, uh, which matches my monitor. So my frame rates are uh, uncapped, so I just set that to whatever my PC can do. Um, normally I get a, a decent amount, maybe sort of between 100 and 180, depending on how it's feeling. Brightness, uh, you want to turn this up a little bit. I play it around sort of 60-ish. Um, just makes seeing enemies in darker areas a little bit um, a little bit easier. You know, you can play it as high as you like. Uh, just does sort of grey out your screen a little bit um, rather than things being dark. But yeah, uh, I'd say somewhere between 60 and 70 is probably the best spot. Um, just means, yeah, players in darker areas a little bit easier to see. 
All right, moving on to quality, um, I play with custom, uh, use 105 render res. I mean, most people just play 100, you probably stick it on 100, it doesn't really matter. Um, fidelity, FX cast, this is a really important setting for making sure that your game looks nice and, uh, and, and sharp. Um, and then Filmic, uh, SMAA T2X, whatever that means, that's the best one, that's all I know. Uh, and I put, I put the uh, fidelity cast strength at 100 as well. So for the rest of the settings, I set everything to sort of low or normal. Um, not really too much difference. I haven't noticed any issues with any of the graphic settings playing it at low or normal. Again, if you're going for like nice high quality at the sort of the sacrifice of your frames, go ahead. That's completely up to you. Um, but yeah, for best performance, I play most things low. Uh, the only thing I put on uh, Ultra is the spot cache. Um, I remember someone telling me um, there's some benefit to doing so. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, but yeah, I play that on, on Ultra. But yeah, other than that, everything is either off um, or nice and low. You've of course got to make sure that depth of field is turned off. This is sort of blur around your weapons when you're aiming down sight you don't want that on that's really annoying um, and then all kinds of motion blur I turn off as well as well as film grain I put that right down to the lowest just for the best quality right field of view I play 100 um, probably the best bet is somewhere between 100 and maybe 110 I find 120 to be a little bit too um, wide I've played 100 for the past well however many years I've been on PC since sort of modern warfare the the first modern warfare um, so yeah I uh, well the second Modern Warfare, but you know what I mean. Um, so I play that on 100, that's just what I'm, uh, I'm used to. Uh, I play independent, um, I know a lot of people like to play affected, I find affected works better for close range guns like subs, and then independent works best for AR, so I play competitive as well, so um, being an AR in that, I, uh, I stick to a pendant, uh, independent. Weapon field of view, I play wide, this just, um, as you can see from the text, is, uh, the weapon looks smaller, just clears more stuff off your screen, meaning that the enemies are a little bit easier to see. And you're also going to want to change the first person camera movement to least at 50%. This is like if someone calls in a streak on you, like a mortar strike or something, your screen's not going to be shaking all over the place and it's it's fairly um, sort of toned down in that sense. It helps, helps you be accurate basically um, when there's explosions and all stuff going off near you. Also, I set default spectator camera to uh, game perspective rather than helmet camera because I don't really like the whole third person thing. It's a little bit weird. Um, so that was set to helmet camera by default, I think, on mine. So I changed it back to game perspective. Right, audio settings. I play headphone bass boost, um, just find that works the best uh, for hearing footsteps and things like that. Master volume I set dependent on how loud and how cracked I'm trying to get. Um, if, I'm, if I'm playing normally, I'll set it around sort of 60. Um, if I'm just chilling, set it down to like 10 or something, depends what I'm, uh, I'm feeling. Uh, music I completely turn off, uh, and then dialogues and effects, I'll set them both to, uh, to 50. Hit marker volume I turn down low because um, I don't really play with hit markers on. I know a few people find that a little bit weird that I don't. If you do like hearing the hit markers and that helps you shoot more accurately, um, up that to whatever you want to set that to, but I don't really listen to them, so I turn that down low. Turn all the subtitles off, um, don't really need those. Uh, voice chat turn on, last words voice chat turn on, proximity chat is definitely one you want to be turning on, um, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set your voice chat volume down to 25 or even lower. Um, basically, this means you'll still be able to hear all of the enemies calling out, but it won't be really annoying in your ears um, if someone's I don't know, screaming or whatever, um, you're not, they're not going to be putting you off, but you will still be able to hear all of the call outs from stuff that's actually going to be useful to you. And again, by default, I set push to talk because um, I actually use Discord to talk to my teammates when we play together um, for the sole reason that people can't hear us calling out. Um, and then if I want to sort of throw people off, um, I've got it set to Y, so I just press Y on my keyboard um, and then I'll start call, uh, calling out all the all the stuff that I want to annoy them with. Um, we'll start like saying, oh, I'm behind you and just, just piss them off, basically. Uh, it's good fun. Um, but yeah, I set that to push to talk unless okay, I, um, I'm playing by myself uh, and then I just set it to open mic if I want to chat with a teammate. But yeah, as default, that's push to talk. Hit marker sound I set to Modern Warfare. Um, don't really know if it makes a difference. I don't even really turn hit markers on, so doesn't really make much difference. Um, and you're also going to want to turn on this reduce tinnitus sound. Um, basically means flashbangs and all that are not going to be as annoying in your ears um, if you get stunned. Um, so yeah, it's good to turn that uh, turn that on. Just again, helps you just focus on the game rather than all of the distractions. And the last one we're going through in today's video is the interface settings. Um, so I set that all just to the default on there. Some people do color customization to make things um, easier to see. I'm, I'm a very standard person. I play on standard controller layout. I play on standard colors. Again, have a little play around. Um, I think especially for people that are colorblind, that um, can help quite a lot adjusting that stuff. But so it's not really something that I do too much. Um, your heads up display bounds, you're going to want to set them both to zero. What this does is this brings everything in your sort of frame closer together. So your mini maps closer, your score streaks are closer, like everything is closer to the center of the screen, which means you're having to sort of look around less on your screen and just sort of flick your eyes up, check your mini map, um, just makes that a little bit easier to do. Uh, so I play on a 24. 
four inch monitor um so if you especially if you're on like a big tv screen or something um bringing that all in is going to make that even easier because otherwise you're fully gonna have to be turning your head to check the minimap which isn't really ideal so i play standard with all the minimap just play that on square i don't know anyone that plays it on circle um and then have that rotate as well in the top corner um, on PC, I run FPS counter, server latency, just so that I know if I'm lagging um, or if there's connection issues in the lobby. Normally you can tell, but say the difference between a, a 10 ping lobby and maybe a 50, 60 ping lobby, uh, you can't necessarily tell straight away until you start getting into gunfights. But if you check and you say, oh, this is a 60, 70 ping lobby, you think maybe we'll we'll chill down. We won't get as, uh, we won't chal as much um, just because, you know, you can't 100% count on your connection being good. Um, and then also put the clock on just so that I can keep an eye off the time when it gets to four in the morning and I'm like, ah, shit, I'm still on. Right, next one is the center dot. You're going to want to turn this on. What this does is a permanent dot in the middle of your screen, um, sort of where your crosshairs are. And what this allows you to do is allows you to line your shots up at the hip. So you line up the center dot, and then when you're aimed down sight, you know you're going to be perfectly on um, who you're trying to shoot. So it just helps with you being accurate, really. Um, I set that to default. You can set the dot larger. You don't want it too large, especially at long-distance gunfights. That might be getting in the way, and it might be a little bit annoying. Um, but yeah, I set that just at default there. And that's about it for the settings. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Um, chuck these on, um, see how you do. Hopefully you guys like them. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.